Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Brittany, and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Zoo. I'm so excited that you're joining me today. Um, and you'll notice that I do have my mask around my neck um, since I am teaching today from my apartment and not sharing space with anybody else. I will have my mask lowered just for this webinar. But if you do visit the zoo, and I surely hope that you do, just make sure to plan ahead to reserve, make a free timed reservation to go to our website at stlzoo.org. And then also be sure to bring your mask with you. Now, I have a very exciting presentation today for you. Now, starting off, if you didn't know, this is a very, very exciting week. It is National Zookeeper Week. And I just wanted to take a moment to wish our keepers well. They are working so hard caring for our animals and they do an amazing job at it. These are two of our penguin keepers. You can see some of our penguins going for one of their uh, winter walks. Now, starting off with our penguin friends here. Is anybody here a fan of penguins? Go ahead and type in the chat box. Where are my penguin fans? Now, we have many different species of penguins, um, 17 or 18, depending on the researcher that you speak to. And this is a graphic created by Peppermint Narwhal. And I really wanted to share this graphic today with you because it shows an average size of a man and a woman compared to penguins. Now, a lot of us think about penguins as just being black and white, and sometimes their beaks are different colors. However, they range in sizes as well as some other patterns on their bodies too. So sharing this, we can see the emperor penguin is actually very tall compared to our little penguin down below. At the St. Louis Zoo, we have four species of penguins. Those are the king penguin, the gentoo, Humboldt, and our southern rockhopper. That being said, can't forget our puffins. Now we have two species of puffins, the tufted puffin and the horned puffin, and they can look different depending on it, the season. So during breeding season, sometimes they get some really cool, um, what we say plumage um, or the feathers can change in the colors on their beaks. So if you visit the zoo throughout different parts of the year, you might notice some slight changes. Now some characteristics. This is something that's really important when we talk about our puffin and penguin friends and things they have in common, they are all part of the bird group. So scientists group our animals based on simil similar characteristics. Um, so they are, again, belong with the birds. They look very different than maybe some other birds you can think of, um, like our ostrich or our parrots, but it's very similar stuff. They all have backbones. So having a backbone means that you're a vertebrate. We're also a vertebrate too. Their body covering our feathers. Now, what's neat about penguins is their feathers are teeny tiny and they have a lot of them. It's really important because these feathers help to trap air next to their body to keep them warm. And just with our, with our puffins as well, they will actually put an oil that their body creates over their feathers that waterproofs them. So when they go in the water, they can be waterproof and stay warmer because that water temperature is very chilly. They're warm blooded. And if you've joined me before um, for webinars when we talk about warm and cold blooded animals, um, you may have heard this, um, but if not, a really, quick, um, a really quick way to describe it is that no matter what's happening around the animal, the body temperature, so if they have a thermometer um, checking their body temperature, it stays the same. So if it's a warmer day or a cooler day, their body temperature is consistent. It is controlled from within, just like us. They have beaks. Now these beaks look a little similar and I bet you can imagine why. Why do you think their beaks might be similar? Yeah, to catch fish. So they both eat different types of fish. They can also eat um, other animals too, like squid and krill. Sounds really good for breakfast, right? So sometimes you can learn a lot about our animals based on the shape of their mouth, um, especially with our birds with their beaks. So they're both um, fish eaters as well as some other things too. They have wings as well. Now their wings are used a little bit differently. 
Whereas we know our penguin friends are one of the species of birds that cannot fly, puffins actually can. And what I like to think about is they use their wings when they're swimming in the same way that we would use our arms. So they kind of turn into almost like flippers, although they are definitely wings and how they use them. So they almost look like they fly underwater. Now this is an image taken from the St. Louis Zoo inside. So you can see a lot of king penguins right now enjoying a dip. And then a gentoo, we have quite a few gentoo penguins up on top of the rocks. Our puffins are really good at swimming as well. Um, but they can also fly, which is really impressive. Now, where do penguins and puffins live? So this is a picture of a map. And I always like to talk about our imaginary equator right down the center. Now the equator breaks up our, um, breaks up the map into hemispheres. So you have the Northern hemisphere and the Southern hemisphere. But what's really cool about the middle, that's the area that receives the most sun throughout the entire year. So that's where we have our tropical rainforest, um, if you're ever wondering where those are located. And then it, I always imagine that as you move further, whether you go up or down, it gets cooler and cooler and cooler. And the coldest spots are up at the, the northern peak in the southern. Now, interestingly, our puffin friends are from the northern hemisphere and penguins are in the southern. So they actually never cross paths. Now this makes sense because when you visit Penguin and Puffin Coast, you don't see them sharing the same space together. So we replicate, we try to make it as the same as, or as similar as possible as to what they would have in the wild. Now these are some images of wild habitat. The first image, which will be on your far left, is a habitat that you would find puffins and they like to um, nest on rocky cliffs. Now, a neat thing about puffins is during non-breeding season, when they're not nesting, they're actually just out at sea. In the center, this is what you would see more in our sub-Antarctic and Antarctic habitats, so more cold. Um, you'll see a lot of the rocky area, so where they have different mounds, lots of water around too, because that is where our animals get a lot of their food. And then the last wild habitat to share is off the coast of Peru. Now, this is going to sound a little strange. This is indeed habitat for a penguin, and it's also a desert. There are warm weather penguins and penguins that can live in habitats that are not freezing cold is what we would normally imagine or think. And what's important to note with this is there's not a lot of food up above on the land, but the water is so important. It's near the Humboldt current and the water provides all the food and nutrients that those animals, and not just those penguins, but all the animals that are around there need to survive. So how did we take these wild habitats and bring it all the way to St. Louis, Missouri? Well, we did it in a few ways. So this is Penguin and Puffin Coast two indoor photos in one outside. As you enter this habitat, prepare to get a blast of chilly air. I always make sure that I have my jacket with me. It is kept at 45 degrees year round inside. Now, sometimes it's hard to kind of imagine what that feels like. So if you walk to your refrigerator and open the door, we keep our refrigerators at about 40 degrees. Um, give or take a couple degrees here or there. So if you want to know what it feels like to walk in and you're missing Penguin and Puffin Coast this morning, you can just walk in, open the fridge door, um, and imagine the chilly air. So also the lighting differs. Again, our penguins and puffins are in separate areas, and lighting plays a really big role in penguins and puffins and for them to know what season it is. So the light um, will actually be on the same time frame is different areas where they're found in the wild and um, which is kind of neat so sometimes you'll notice it's a little darker in one section and brighter in the other that's again because they're in different hemispheres um, so that helps them mimic so they know when breeding season is um, or maybe the best time to molt 
knowing that our puffins do like rocky cliffs for nesting, you'll notice that they have some nesting um, holes there too, and there's water around. Now, our Humboldt penguins, which is the last photo all the way to the right, they are actually outside. And I can't tell you the number of times I've had guests say, you know, Miss Brittany, why are penguins outside? That seems very strange. Well, our hot summer heat is very similar to what the wild Humboldt penguins experience and they actually enjoy that. That's part of their normal life. And the water, however, is very cold. So if they need to take a dip, they can jump on in. Food, everybody needs it. It helps give us energy and, and helps us grow. So our penguins get fed a, a special diet every single day by our keepers. And some of our penguins are even hand fed. Now they get different types of fish, um, krill, and again, some squid, which I don't know about you, but maybe not my top choice for breakfast. There are so many different penguins and puffins, and these are just a few of the residents. Um, I always like to share that our animal friends do have, uh, most of them do have names. Um, I see Miss Emily is joining us. We're almost <laughs> ready, Miss Emily. All right, sounds good. You're so excited. I didn't tell you guys we have a surprise today. Oh, we have a surprise, Miss Brittany. Uh, penguins out of the bag, surprises today. So I am <laughs> almost ready. Um, yeah, so we, okay. all the penguins and puffins have names and these are just a few of them. So we have Pedro, Ethel, and Mona. Something I wanna point out with Mona, she is a humble penguin like Pedro. However, she is younger in oh, this hi, buddy. And what you'll notice is that she doesn't have that banding yet. So penguins do molt and they will, as they molt, as they grow, they do get their what we call adult plumage. Now, because we have our surprise guest who is ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead, stop sharing my presentation. I'm so excited for you guys um, this morning. And Emily, I'm going to go ahead and send it over to you. All right, sounds good. Hi, everybody. All right, so this was a surprise even for me. We have Keeper Clinton here with us, and he brought some friends. So we have, so I think you may have heard me before I muted myself, because Elliot is um, really excited to see me. I'm excited to see him. But Clinton here can uh, let us know who everybody is and tell us a little bit about what it's like to be a zookeeper here at Penguin Puffin Coast. Hi guys, again, my name is Clinton. I'm a keeper here at Penguin and Puffin Post. So these are our sub-Antarctic species and you are gonna hang out amongst them, but it is like 60 something degrees Fahrenheit in this tour space. So if you see them kind of disappear, um, you'll see them maybe go into this room here. That's a nice air conditioned room that they can go in and out of if they want to, as you see Ethel and Elliot go in there now. <laughs> so we have six birds up here currently. Those two guys are team penguins. Uh, that's Ethel and Elliot and uh, Ethel was born here at the St. Louis Zoo, as well as Elliot. Ethel was born in uh, November of 2016, so she'll be four soon. And so was he, he was born in December, or sorry, in late November of 2016, so he'll be four. Then we have some gem tunes and a rock hopper. So Woody here is a rock hopper penguin, and she was born in January of 2010. We got Trouble here and Double over there, and they are aptly named uh, Double and Trouble because they came in when we opened the building in 2003 as a one and two year old, and they oh, oh, well, oh gonna Elliot's gonna call. You see? <laughs> Fantastic! <laughs> Elliot is the man, and that's just something that we call trumpeting or a clean vocalization. And he just wanted to say hi to everybody. Um, so we have uh, Double and Trouble that are now um, 17 and 18 years old. And then CJ over here, he's actually new to our zoo. So if you know about the SSPs or the Species Survival Plans, we'll often um, send birds to other zoos and get birds from other zoos uh, that are really good for our colonies and flocks. So he came from the Riverbank Zoo and he actually just celebrated his 10th birthday on the 27th of June. Um, so that's the, the Riverbank Zoo is in South Carolina. He's gonna go again. <laughs> Fantastic. So Clinton, I don't know if you have an answer for this, but what would have, um, why does he call? So he is wanting our attention. <laughs> um, also, if he wanted the attention of his mate or his offspring, if you're a king penguin and you're in a colony of thousands of birds, you have to be loud, you have to stick 
your head up in the air and you have to let that vocalization be known throughout the and the cool thing is, I like to think of myself as a key penguin. So here I am talking loud in a group of individuals, and they're like, okay, cool, we're doing the king penguin thing. We're just going to yell out and talk to each other. <laughs> so oftentimes when I start um, either talking to Elliot or talking to a group of people, like the public or anything like that, um, you'll hear all kinds of vocalizations coming from everybody because they're like, cool, we're doing the penguin thing. We're yelling out loud. Oh, hi, trouble. Uh, hopefully, uh, Emily can catch it, but uh, chin tunes to greet each other, they'll do what we call a bow and hiss, and it'll be this right here. So, I don't know if you can hear that digitally, but it was an audible hiss. That's actually just a greeting, a hello from Gen 2 Penguins. So, trouble is very bonded with a lot of the keepers and even education staff. And so, she's going to sit there and say hi to Emily about 500 times during this, this <laughs> webinar here. It's a uh... You know, their concept of personal space is not the same as ours, I guess. Yes, my favorite is to rock opera. So you've heard trumpety. Um, you're hearing the Gen 2 hiss. Um, and then the rock hoppers are my favorite greeting. They just get in each other's face and get as loud as they can uh, for as long as they can in one breath. <laughs> and then that's, that's hello from them. So let's see if you would actually do it. <laughs> and Woody's my girl, so she usually says hi to me every day like that. <laughs> uh, you might also see that um, they're going to um, go potty uh, here at the zoo. We clean up after these guys. Penguins actually have a very high metabolism, so it's said that they are sort of using the facilities about every 15 minutes or so. So you're going to see these towels over here. You're going to see me cleaning up after the birds. Uh, <laughs> so I wanted to point out, because I think Miss Brittany might have touched on the banding. So you guys might have seen a picture of Miss Ethel and you tried to figure out that it was her, but you can see Miss Ethel's actual band. And she's gonna <laughs> eat my camera. Well, thank you, Ethel. That is great. Yes. <laughs> Penguins are very inquisitive and they're all um, hunters of uh, fish and squid and any kind of moving thing in the ocean that they can get their bill on. So whenever a bubble floats past them for enrichment or a camera uh, from Emily here, um, those sorts of things really really catch their, uh, their eye and get their instinct kicking and they're like, oh man, I have to bite that. Oh, Woody. I know. oh, Woody. There goes Woody. So, um, if I did mention, uh, I did mention that these guys are studying Antarctic penguins, but what does that mean? That means that these guys come from uh, the uh, below the equator on islands that are um, just north of Antarctica that we call the subantarctic islands. Um, you're going to find penguins all over the place down there, uh, especially in Antarctica and even up uh, into South America and Africa. All right, um, so are, yeah, do, do we, we have uh, do we have any questions? I want to make sure we get to them, if we well, have you're, any. You're welcome to like sit and get on their oh. stuff. All right, whatever, whatever you want to. Question. <laughs> sure. Um. So, does it matter which flipper the band is located on? One of our participants noticed that the. Band <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's a, that's a great question. So, ideally, um, everybody should be banded on uh, both wings, or you can even call them flippers. Um, if you look at birds that, um, that fly, they're on their legs, and a lot of times zoos and um, aquariums will stick to left band being female and right band being male. Here at Penguin and Puppy Coast, we try to double band everybody, but the funny thing is, is these guys here are kind of like our, our known birds. Like these guys are like some of the keeper's favorites. So oftentimes, Ethel and Elliot only have the one band because we really honestly know who it is. Uh, but if you're a new keeper here, or you're just a little OCD at times, uh, you can band them both on, on each wing and it's not an issue whatsoever. So what That's you, question. yeah, so what you just saw Elliot do is called rousing and big bird or other birds with bigger feathers do that as well. And it can be a form of temperature regulation for them. They put out all those feathers at once and kind of floof. Um, Ian wants to know what your favorite bird is, Clinton, here at Penguin Puppet Oh, Coast. yeah, see, I get that question a lot, and I, can't, <laughs> I can't answer in front of everybody. Uh, no, but I, I, I've known Elliot and Ethel since they were born. I absolutely adore them. Woody's my girl. She greets me every morning when I'm here. Um, I actually made a video recently um, whenever, you know, we, we refer to ourselves as essential workers during quarantine. And I hadn't seen her in four days, and she came running up to me, and I said, uh, I put in my video, like, when you haven't seen your essential coworker <laughs> in four days. Uh, and then I really love two of our humbles, uh, Guapo and Mona. I haven't handed knowing them since they were young. Uh, but the crazy thing is, is I have a relationship with every penguin here. 
Now, if you have enemies, you still have a relationship with them. <laughs> I wouldn't say I have enemies, but like there are birds who aren't big fans of me, but that's okay. That's just our relationship. Um, but I, I, uh, you know what? I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at those guys there because I could go on all day. I, I love them all. All right. That's a great question, Ian. What other questions, uh, Miss Brittany? Um, so we have two questions. How fast can penguins get? And also, since it's not easy to choose a specific favorite, um, do you have a favorite species? So how fast can they get in a favorite species of penguin or puppet? <laughs> um, well, you're asking how fast can they swim? Is that the question? Um, the participant said how fast can they get? So if you yeah. know either swimming or waddling. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can answer, I can kind of answer both of those. So um, on land, penguins, all 18 species, and, and actually what Elliot's doing there. Is He's, um, <laughs> Elliot's preening me right now. So it's like the bird equivalent um, of human grooming, uh, which are two perfect breeding. <laughs> and uh, Elliot, if you didn't know, is the best preener this side of the Mississippi. <laughs> um, uh, so no, pen penguins are all 18 species. They're really meant for the water. So all of them can swim really fast in the water and are streamlined moving in the water with the Gen 2 being the fastest swimmer. They swim uh, right around 20 miles per hour. Um, everybody else is going to swim a little bit slower than that. As a bigger body penguin, a king's going to swim a little bit lower. But being built for the water, not land, that's why you see penguins waddle. You're going to see uh, Trouble here also put her wings back. All those sorts of things are a balanced thing. Now, don't let it fool you. They can actually get up and move whenever they want, especially the humble penguin. Um, the humble penguin uh, are known to have studies on them where they are uh, sort of the most skittish penguin. And they want to, uh, when they want to get up and move, they definitely can. So if I had to put a number on it, they're probably running at about, I don't know, five miles an hour or so. Um, and then I'm sorry, the second question was... Oh, do you have a favorite species? Oh, I do. I, I do. So I love the Humboldts because we've done great things with them recently in the past um, four years. So I've gotten to really have my hands in raising some humble penguins. And then, uh, not, to, not to brag, but they did send me to Peru <laughs> where the humble penguin occurs naturally. And I got to work with humble penguins in the wild. So uh, penguin, uh, humble penguins hold a, hold a special place in my heart for sure. All right, I know that we are almost out of time, but are there any last questions before all of our penguins go back into their cold area here? I can dish out a couple more random facts. <laughs> or... Oh, uh, Allison says, happy zookeeper week, Clinton. Oh, thank you very much. It, it's, uh... I'm honored to be a keeper and I'm honored that we get recognized, but uh, we get a whole week as opposed to like a holiday, which is fantastic. So thank you very much. Uh, we're all from myself <laughs> and all the other keepers. We're all very appreciative of all the kind words that we get because that brings us the week. And the, and the treats. We get lots of them. <laughs> all the keepers are um, foodies. Most keepers <laughs> that I know are foodies, so we love the uh, the treats that all the departments bring us. So. Yeah, you like too. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you haven't noticed, I'm a bit of a loud talker, and um, I identify with a king penguin because of um, just the sheer goofiness. But um, my favorite uh, communication is with the rock hopper because we just get loud on each other's faces. <laughs> right, Woody? Hey, Woody! <laughs> Oh, goodness. All right, Miss Brittany, I know that you are, oh, you're getting a lot of Zookeeper Week, uh, happy Zookeeper oh, Week now in the chat. Yeah. So much, uh, <laughs> make sure you um, go to the zoo's uh, uh, Facebook page and wish um, uh, happy Zookeeper Week to the postings that they're doing. You're going to see a lot of the areas posting uh, what their keepers are doing. Um, so as much as I appreciate it, they will as well. Um, and then come and say hi to a keeper at the zoo uh, this week if you're here. Thank you so much, Emily, Clinton, and all of our penguin friends. That <laughs> is such a surprise. Um, I, just, I knew we were going to be chatting with Emily and one of the amazing keepers. <laughs> you would also see some of our penguin friends. <laughs> Let me. I... Are you all right, well, on? thanks, Miss Brittany. I think all of the penguins are um, maybe. Um, saying goodbye before they go back back down. So have a great rest of your day, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Seriously, I had no idea we were going to see animals.
at best, I thought maybe we were going to go down in the exhibit and see some maybe swimming. So this was fantastic. That was a behind the scenes look with our keeper Clinton and our fellow educator, uh, education conservation liaison, Miss Emily. So that was wonderful. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about penguins and puffins. Um, as a reminder, if you are so inspired now and really want to go and see our penguins and puffin friends, um, please visit our zoo at stlzoo.org to again make your free timed reservation. Make sure to bring your mask and we look forward to seeing you guys so very soon. Have a wonderful day. Until next time.